So here uh, I'm in the icofoam folder. So what I can do is I can just, when there's something with cavity or elbow, I can, um, can open foam solve one Karman flows where one disc rotates. Well, I would just classify that as a problem with a moving boundary. Yes, it can definitely do that. So here, uh, where are we? So in this case, we are we have cavity and elbow. What does that mean? Well, we don't know. So let's just go into cavity. And you can see that there are two script files. Anything that appears green typically means it's a script file. What you can do is you can quickly open that using a text editor. I'm using Vim here. And yes, this is a bash script, right? So I'll just, oh, sorry, a shell script actually. So I'll just close this, do LS again. And then I'm going to go inside this cavity folder one more time. This right here is a tutorial. So whenever you see a zero folder, a constant folder and a system folder, you know that you are inside a tutorial. Okay, just remember that. This is what you call as an open form case setup. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to execute the tree command, which basically visualizes what are the files that are present. So inside the zero folder, I have something called as P and U. Inside the constant folder, I have something called as transport properties. Inside the system folder, I have a few files. This is how an open form case is organized. Now remember, what is one of the steps that we do in CFD? We assign initial conditions and boundary conditions, right? These conditions are assigned at a particular value for time, correct? That time is basically the name of this folder. So here we are assigning the initial and boundary conditions at time equal to zero seconds. For what variables are we initializing? We are initializing it for pressure, the kinematic pressure, and also for the velocity, right? For these two variables, we are providing the initial and boundary conditions and we are providing them at time equal to zero. That is what this means. Then for any type of fluid flow simulations, you are going to have physical properties. Now in this case, the icofoam basically solves what you call as a diffusion problem. It basically solves, uh, sorry, my bad. Uh, I apologize, that's a mistake. Uh, in case of icofoam, it basically solves your momentum equations, uh, continuity equations, and that's it. Now, in terms of uh, solving the equations, you will need to provide a diffusivity, right? That diffusivity is provided in this file called as transport properties, right? So any constant. So in the future, if you're having K epsilon turbulence model, you will have turbulence properties inside the constant folder because those properties typically tend to be constant for, uh, you know, a particular simulation. Then you have your system folder. So this is where you provide your mesh. And one of the meshing platforms that OpenFoam supports is called as block mesh. That is OpenFoam's inbuilt block based meshing utility, right? Well, I'll kind of talk to you about that briefly, not in super detail, but it, just enough to you know understand what's going on. So that is what, what is called as block mesh dict. So what does DICT mean? Well, that means a dictionary. So block mesh dictionary, what is control dict? <laughs> well, when you're setting up a simulation, you need to say, okay, my simulation is going to start at zero seconds. My simulation is going to end at one millisecond. And you know, this is my time step, right? That is called as a control file, a control dictionary. Then you have FV schemes and FV solutions. What does FV scheme mean? Well, FV stands for finite volume. As I mentioned, open form is a finite volume code. What you do in finite volume is you start with the integral form of the governing equations, right? You take a governing equation and you integrate inside a control volume, meaning you take the volume quantities and you convert that into phase quantities and you compute fluxes, correct? When you're computing fluxes, you need to basically use a uh, an interpolation scheme to compute the flux quantities and the inter interpolation can be a first order scheme or a second order scheme. And uh, you will have to compute things like gradient at the faces for which you'll have gradient schemes uh, and so on. So the FE schemes basically keeps track of the list of numerical schemes that you have to represent each of the terms that you have in your discretized equation. Now, as far as the convention for this, they typically follow, uh, you know, the, the book follows, so not the book, open form follows the convention which is found in say Suhas Patankar, not by design, but it works out very well. There's a book by Suhas Patankar and then there's a book by uh, Farziger. If you read these two books, you will understand how the equations have been written down, correct? And here FV schemes basically says how each and every term, how are my surface flux schemes computed? How are my phase fluxes computed? 
how are my face quantities interpolated what is the interpolation method we have right so these are the things that are that is provided in the fv schemes file finally fv solutions folder here